Purdue is just rolling. And, you know, the more I see ED play, um, I, I'm like, yo, there's got to be a way this guy is going to be impactful in the NBA. And, and I kept thinking, you know, uh, the fact that he's so big, he's such a, a force that you can't stop him from catching the ball in the mm -hmm. paint. And, you know, he rebounds so well. So he's been impressive, man, just because of the way he's – he's playing better now than I've ever seen him play. I don't watch a lot of college basketball. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. If you guys had run up to me with those microphones the way y'all did in that skit, <laughs> asking people who uh, – can you name one college basketball player, I would have been stuck, right? So it's like, you know, now I'm mm -hmm. starting to dive deeper in to these guys that the Grizzlies are obviously going to be bringing in and looking at. You know, we'll be at the draft combine uh, in Chicago in, in May. Uh, to interview these guys and see them play and see them work out. And then we'll have a better knowledge of it. But, you know, the bigs right now, you know, I mean, Edie is making the name for himself. And I think he's climbing up some draft boards because if this guy, and, and I'm not saying this to be controversial or anything like yeah. that, but I couldn't help to think with the way he's playing, if he was an African-American or if he was black, he'd be a lottery pick. He'd be a lottery pick. No, would. we wouldn't. Yes, we would. Yes, no, we would. not at 7-4 playing like that, Mike. CJ, CJ. CJ, CJ. Listen before you disagree, yo. I mean, let me let me present my information when it comes to that. This guy, and, and I know the game has changed, but the game was still up and down and fast paced when Roy Hibbert came into the league. You know where Roy Hibbert was picked? Top 15. You know, uh, a, a guy that was even a bust, like the Grizzlies had to pick Hashim to beat. You know where he was picked? Top three. Zach Eady is a better player and more balanced than Roy Hibbert and, you know, Hashim to beat when it comes to that. He's a dominant big man. And again, if he were in a different situation, he would be looked at a lot differently. He would be looked at as a lot more athletic and a lot more NBA ready than being, you know, a tall, big white guy. I'm not saying he's going to come to the league and dominate. But what I'm saying is that when you see his type, his prototype, and historically what that has meant, you know, a, a lot of guys have come into the league. You know, Brendan Haywood, a lot of these guys have come into the league uh, with a lot less mobility and talent than Zach Eady. And they've been higher picks. So I'll see what he does in the combine. I'm not saying it to be controversial. I'm just saying, I'm being honest. That just passed through my mind as I watched him with the way he's played in these two NCAA tournament games. Greg Oden comes to mind. Like, think about it. Greg Oden was the number one pick overall in the NBA. Does Zach Eady look worse than Greg Oden? Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, well, he, the yes game, he, he looks in the, the NCAA, in the and, NCAAA tournament. Yeah, in the and, NCAA tournament. Yes, Greg Oden had a hell of a run through the NCAA tournament when he came through. And the game has changed so much in the past, what, five years where it is up, down, three-point shooting. My question is, is he, is he Walker Kessler, right? Is he that type mm -hmm. of big where he can be big, he can catch lobs, roll into the rim, or he can get to the open spot, roll into the rim, and where he can defend the rim at a high level? And I don't think Zach Eady can. I think what we're seeing from Zach Eady is a guy who is a great college basketball player, don't get me wrong right phenomenal college basketball player but like that there's no quickness there from Zach Eady I think that you can go out in the NBA which is a game of skill right the NBA is a game the difference in NBA and college basketball is just how skilled everybody is on the court and if you put Zach Eady out there I think he gets gobbled up in pick and roll situations I don't think that he gives you any sort of real threat on offense so now you've got a guy who can just camp out in the in the paint uh, as a as a rim defender, and I don't know where any easy shots come from with Zach Eady out there, and I'm not sure how good a rebounder he is against bigger, uh, more athletic competition than what he's facing Grambling and uh, the Big Ten this year, right? So that that's my knock on Zach Eady. Somebody might take him. I'd be surprised if they took him. He'll be he'll get an opportunity. He will absolutely get an opportunity to prove me wrong. I just don't see it. I just feel like that's where there's a difference between someone like a Donovan Klingon from UConn who fits more as a modern or how we see bigs today and his growth as being able to not just be someone who strictly works on the post. He's become far better of a finisher in transition. He's become a better roller. What he does as an elite shot blocker in college basketball, one of the best rebounders in college basketball, watching that UConn team, I get like, oh, I'm like, ooh. Donovan Klingon. Like, I see that fu that future is more clear to me of Donovan Klingon making an impact potentially for a team early on in an NBA career, where for Zach Eady, I feel like I have to do more mental gymnastics around it. And uh, maybe you're right from a standpoint of there's inherent bias with it. And it feels like Zach Eady has been there for such a significant period of time. And I haven't seen his game grow as much 
I am not watching every single Purdue basketball game to ever exist. I am also not sitting here saying Zach Eadie is only good because he is tall. I know there are far more skills that allow him to be successful, potential back-to-back player of the year in college basketball. Um, it just isn't as obvious to me when it comes to Edie. I, I, hey, listen, all of, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that he's going to get to the league and be Jaron Jackson Jr. or Anthony Davis. I'm not saying that he fits the mold of what we say is the modern sure. big. I'm not saying that. I'm saying he is what he is. And when you have that kind of size, that kind of stature, and you're that close to the back, no, he's got, not going to be able to defend point guards on pick and rolls. You, I'm, not, I, I'm not saying present what he can't do. I'm saying what he can do. And if he's on the floor, and he's able to stretch and get his get if you throw it into him in the post the way he's playing in the ncaa tournament through these two games i'm saying that i've never seen him play like this and i'm saying that if he can continue to show this then he's going to gain more and more traction because teams aren't going to say hey let's bring zach eating in here to be like i said you know uh uh carl anthony town but is if he's available to be a regular big and get to the nba level and I said before, my main point was that if he was African-American, I think he would be looked at a lot more differently. I think he would be higher up on some guy's board because of that. And again, it doesn't have anything to do with race or bias or anything like that. I'm just saying the fact of the matter is the way he's playing in this NCAA tournament, I've seen guys climb in from non-draftable to lottery picks based on how the run that they've made through the NCAA tournament. If he keeps this up and Purdue wins the championship, Zach Eady is going to make himself a lot more money than people are giving him credit for so far. The Jessica Benson Show with C.J. Hurt, live every weekday at 8 a.m.